our first step in exploring a more natural playground for Riemann integrals, uh, the regulated functions, we'll start with the step functions, the ones that make regulated functions, very similar to the way that rational numbers make real numbers. This is kind of the standard model that most things follow. So if we think of like a sequence of rational numbers that are approaching irrational number, if I just had the rationals, it's not a convergent sequence. It's Cauchy, but it's not convergent. But if I think of the rationals as being a subset of the reals, then it is convergent, but it's just not convergent in that set. So very similarly, I can think of a sequence of step functions. Make them Cauchy. If I just have the step functions by themselves, it doesn't converge to anything. I need to take its completion to make sense of what it means to have a limit. Whereas if I think of the step functions as a subset of the bounded functions, then all I need to do is just take the closure to make sense of the limit. Much slicker. This is a much easier way to do things. First of all, is this a good analogy? Are the bounded functions a complete vector space? Well, we're not physicists, so it's a vector space. We say linear space. And then because we're actually in a proof math class, we're going to be more specific, a complete normed linear space. Linear spaces don't have to have a norm on them. And of course, we're using the soup norm. Showing it's a linear space is easy. I'll leave that to you. Norm, we're using the soup norm. And now we just have to verify that this is a complete space. So we we'll get a Cauchy sequence of bounded functions. And we want to show that it converges to a bounded function. So we let a Cauchy sequence be given. The sequence of functions is a little too abstract. And so we'll just fix a point. And then look at that point. Pointwise bound, subordinate to the uniform bound, which is going to zero in the tail of the sequence. So that means we now have a Cauchy sequence of real numbers. Since the real numbers are complete, they converge. There's some real number that this sequence converges to. So there's the obvious way to define our limit function. We'll define our limit function f by f of x equals that number. Now that we have a function, we just got to make sure it's in the bounded set. So that same x to our triangle inequality with the thing that approximates it. That's going to be small as n goes large. And my claim is, oh, well, there we're done. This will immediately lead to a uniform bound. I'll leave this as an exercise. One thing to watch out for in this exercise is we have a sequence of functions. But what if the bounds for these functions behave like n? Then when I set up my uniform bound, um, I've got my bound for f is the bound for the fn minus f. That's small. But then this piece blows up. So I don't have my uniform bound. Here's your hint. The fact that you have a Cauchy sequence will prevent this from happening.